What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kevin Jackwitz, this is The Cage Review, and this is my review for Spider-Man 2, continuing on my Spider-Man movie series of reviews, directed by Sam Riami, you have Tobey Maguire coming back as Peter Parker's Spider-Man, Rosemary Harris returns as Aunt May Parker, you get clips of Cliff Burtonson as Uncle Ben Parker in flashbacks, Kirsten Dunst returns as Mary Jane Watson, James Franco as Harry Osborn, J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson, who I absolutely love, man. You couldn't get a better J. Jonah Jameson. Honestly, he was perfection. Alfred Molina as Otto Octavius, Dr. Octopus. Uh, Donna Murphy as Rosalie Octavius. Wil Willem Dafoe as Harry Osborn, Green Goblin. He does make a little uh, small cameo in there. And then another cameo all through th all three Spider-Man movies is Bruce Campbell. And this time he's playing a rude usher. So, you have... Spider-Man picking up where he left off, kind of being alone, dealing with the fact that Harry Osborn is kind of torn. He wants to get his revenge on Spider-Man. Of course, he doesn't know that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And so he's, you know, got this internal conflict Peter Parker does about being best friends with Harry and knowing that he really wants to kill him. Uh, the same thing goes with Mary Jane, of course, being absolutely in love with her, crazy about her, but having to protect her because he knows that he always has enemies, which they do talk about in this movie toward the end, which I thought was really good. So Otto Octavius has got this idea for renewal, renewable energy by creating a very small concentrated version of the sun. Well, as you know, the sun has a very powerful magnetic field that pulls things into it. And that is the problem here that is a discussion that Peter Parker has with Dr. Octavius because Peter Parker does have those concerns. Octavius feels very uh, confident about it. And so he does this demonstration for Oscorp and a bunch of their um, representatives. And this is where he kind of fuses these uh, four metal arms to his back that he can control because they kind of connect to your brain through your spinal cord and he's got this fail safe chip that's supposed to keep you know his brain in power instead of the artificial intelligence in the arms um, so he creates this first version in this demonstration and of course things go terribly wrong it fries the inhibitor chip that Octavius created so now these arms the AI are in control of him now and thus Dr. Octopus, Doc Ock is born. And so he believes that his goal, his mission is to do the exact same thing, but to do it right this time. And he was sure that he had everything right. And so he is on this mission and obviously Spider-Man has to stop him because it's just going to create this black hole effect for New York City. And so uh, at first, Dr. Octopus needs money, so he goes to rob a bank that Peter Parker just happens to be at with Aunt May. Big fight there. Really, really great. I love the special effects. I love some of the action sequences in this movie. thought they were very, very well done. Uh, and so that was kind of the first introductor for Spider-Man and Doc Ock. And so Spider-Man, you know, it's kind of his mission, and he understands that it's actually Dr. Octavius, because you can see who Dr. Octavius is. Um... Doc Ock doesn't find out until nearly the end of the movie that Spider-Man is actually Peter Parker, who, you know, he had that conversation with. And so it was very cool. Throughout all of this, you have uh, just a series of unfortunate events in Peter Parker's life, you know, losing his job, he's behind on rent. Harry finally gets really disgusted with Peter Parker and starts slapping him at a party because he's protecting Spider-Man. Uh, you have Mary Jane Watson who is dating this other guy now and he has to watch that whole thing unfold and you know he's always busy being Spider-Man so he's not really being a part of her life and so there was this great thing that they did with the movie where for a little while he felt like he was losing his powers because he wasn't sure who he was supposed to be because he's giving up who he wants to be for who he needs to be and I thought that they did pretty good with that uh, it wasn't perfect, and this, like the other movie, like the first movie, it did have its very cheesy points, especially with Doc Ock 
and some of the fight scenes and like the frantic chaotic scenes where you have these hysterical women just running around screaming and um, like this one girl you see Spidey come down out of the out of the sky and she's like go Spidey go and it was just really cringy honestly it was really so you did have those moments in the movie you did have the cheese um, but overall I thought it was very well done especially with the second sequence between Doc Ock and Spider-Man where they're fighting on a train and Doc Ock rips the controls out and speeds the train up beforehand and leaves Spider-Man to try to rescue everybody on the train. It was really, really cool seeing Spider-Man, you know, using his webbing and just keep shooting and shooting and then, you know, his suit tearing as the train slows down and he's trying to keep it from going off this big ramp. Uh, I thought it was really, really cool. At the end of the day, uh, Spider-Man, uh, he has to go save Mary Jane again because, of course, somebody finds out that Mary Jane is connected to Peter Parker. Um, and, well, let me fully explain how that happens. Harry Osborn gets uh, interrupted by Doc Ock. He comes up to his, like, um, loft or whatever. And Doc Ock says he needs more of this material to make this small son again. So Harry Osborn says, bring me Spider-Man alive and I'll give it to you. So that's exactly what happens. Doc Ock gets Spider-Man, brings him to Harry after that train sequence. Harry takes off Spider-Man's mask, realizes that it is Peter Parker. And now everybody understands the conflict fully for what it is. Harry Osborn understands that this is his best friend, but also the guy he believes killed his dad. And so now he's just like super stunned. And then, you know, Peter Parker tells Harry, you know, Doc Ock has got Mary Jane. I need to save her. There's bigger things happening than me and you right now. We need to put this to the side until this is dealt with. And so Spider-Man goes to face Doc Ock one last time, winds up kind of winning the scenario. And then talking sense into Doc Ock and saying, you know, Dr. Octavius, you need to control this intelligence, not let it control you. And so that's what he does. Doc Ock, after creating a yet another mini son, drowns it in the bay. And so he actually kind of kills himself, sacrifices himself, and goes out a hero instead of a bad guy. While that's happening, Peter Parker when he's talking to Dr. Octavius, takes his mask off so that Doc Ock can see who he is and make it relatable to Dr. Octavius, the man. Mary Jane sees that, and so she says at the end of the movie, I know there's risks, but that should be my choice. And so Mary Jane and Peter Parker finally get together. And so it was a really good movie. I really enjoyed it, thoroughly enjoyed it, honestly. Um, yes, it did have its cheesy moments. Yes, it did have some issues with it. But overall, I really liked it. I thought it was really, really good. And so I'm going to give it, uh, actually, I think I like this a little bit more than the original. Give it an eight and a half out of 10. That's where I'm at. It's personal opinion. Let me know what yours is in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. My name is Kevin Jackowitz, Cage Nation, out.